Hey everyone and welcome back. Today I want to take you along with me as we organize my kitchen. And this is something that is very much needed. While my counters are clear beneath the surface, behind closed drawers and cupboards, my kitchen has quite a few areas that are in desperate need of attention. So I'm excited to get right into this and to inject some order into my kitchen and really give everything a place and a purpose. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button below for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week and let's dive right in. Okay, so let's start off with some of the easier areas and work our way up to the pantry, which is by far going to be the most challenging area to organize. But one thing that I've noticed is that within our drawers, I have a lot of different like sections. We have very wide drawers. And so one thing that I want to do is to divide up my drawers using these little dividers so that we can kind of make sure that everything stays in its place and I can easily create areas within these super wide drawers just to make the space a bit more functional. So let me start by showing you what drawers I want to put them in and then we can get to organizing. So this is the first area that I want to put a divider in, really just right down the middle. As you can see, things just kind of get spread about all over in this area. And so I think that just by creating a defined space for each item, it's really just going to add some organization to this drawer. And then drawer number two, there is a little bit more than just putting in a divider in that I want to do here. But first, I do want to add a divider here so that we can just create one extra essentially box or just defined area that we can put things in. Again, this will just help to make the space feel a bit more organized. Something else that I want to do is whenever I close the drawer, these boxes um, really just kind of move everywhere. And so I also want to put some command strips on the bottoms of these so that they stay in place. Uh, and that way I don't have to worry about things just moving about and generally creating disorder whenever I try to open this. It's also just going to make it a lot more useful for cooking too. So that's the plan for drawer number two. And then finally drawer number three is our junk slash utility drawer. These are just the things that we reach for quite often. So since I have two dividers left, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this area into three and just hopefully organize these items by kind. They're all things that we use and that I want to have in here with the exception of probably this and this. I should move those. Uh, but I think that just by creating some defined spaces in this area, it's going to make it so that these items are just arranged in a far more practical way. So that's the plan for some of those problem drawers in our kitchen. I feel like everyone has those to a certain extent, just drawers that don't kind of work exactly the way that you want. So I really hope that this is going to just add some utility, some usefulness and practicality to our kitchen. Let's get to it now and start organizing those drawers. <music> As I was sorting out these drawers, one of my biggest goals was really to create defined spaces and areas for items to belong. I find that organization is so much easier to maintain when everything has a defined place where it belongs, a home, if you will. And then another thing too I focused on was grouping items by kind. Keeping like items together really can make any system you create easier to maintain. Okay, so the drawers are now organized and looking good. I feel like especially the utensils drawer and the junk drawer are just going to be so much more useful now and it's going to be easy to find exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm excited about that. Now what I want to do is just quickly look through the rest of the cupboards that we have in the kitchen to see if there are any kind of hot spots and areas that we want to organize. So this is kind of Christopher's cabinet is what I like to call it. We keep our food storage containers here and then his tumblers, workout things, mugs, all of that. So uh, nothing much to do there. And then we just keep extra paper towels and water bottles there. So 
I feel like this is organized enough and I just don't touch this area and Christopher just kind of does what he wants to with it. So I don't really want to try organizing that too much on him. And then here, this is decently well organized already. We have our pans for baking, some drying racks for things like cookies and such. And then I just have a couple of baking dishes and pans down there. So that's looking good. And then again, this one I already know is quite organized as well. I really, really like our pots and pan set. These are from Caraway. Actually came with these magnetic organizers. So they're really easy to reach, to get out, to put back. And they stay in place really well. And then on the side here, we attached the, what is this called? The like lid organizer. It has these kind of sticky things that keep it up, but yeah, really organized here too and easy to get at. So nothing too much needed there. But this one, I definitely know we have some stuff to do in here. As you can see, there's just a ton of stuff that I've kind of thrown in here and I've just let this area get really disorganized. So what I want to do is just kind of go in and remove anything that doesn't belong to put it back where it belongs and then also to give things that don't have a home a better home. So for example, I have some extra tea packets here that can go into this box for tea packet. And then, yeah, just generally, I feel like there's a lot we can do to make this space more useful. So let's get to that now. I'm going to start out by just really emptying everything in this cupboard, putting it all on the counter, organizing it, and then we'll put everything back in a logical way. Something that I like to look for as I'm organizing is to see if I have any empty bottles or jars and to use any backstock I have on hand to refill them to make sure that they stay filled with useful items. Okay, so this still might not be the prettiest thing ever, but it is organized now. I have all of my utensils and things for making tea in this little jar here, all of the loose leaf teas on the side here, my little dino infusing tea buddy. I have a few of the bigger teas on that side there. Let's see here, syrup here, my French press here. These are the things that I grab most often, so I wanted to have them on the bottom shelf. And then on the second shelf here are things that I reach for a bit less frequently. I have my coffee bean grinder and some coffee beans. And then I also have some refills for some of the teas that I have down here. I'll often buy them in bulk and then just keep out a smaller amount, which is just easier for me to keep organized and then keep the kind of larger stock back there. So slowly working my way through those. And then in this box, I just keep all of my tea bags and things like that. So this might not be the prettiest organization system, although it doesn't look that bad, but I definitely think this is going to be a lot more functional and definitely is looking better than it was. Okay, and that finally brings us to the pantry. And this is honestly the main reason why I felt the need to do a big organization of my kitchen. I've really struggled with figuring out how to organize this in a way that's practical and useful. And I've done a lot of research on exactly how I want to organize it. So I want to give you kind of a tour of what it looks like now, and then I'll talk about my plans for organizing it. So as you can see, there is no real system of organization here. I have a couple of cardboard boxes that we literally had left over from when we moved that I've been using to store a bunch of things. There's also like a random pile of crap there that needs to be sorted out. Let's see, here I have all of our like oils, vinegars, salt, pepper, all of the, like, the baking supplies is there. Spices to the side. Okay, this looks pretty nice, okay? If we can make the rest of a pantry look like this, I'll be happy. And then we have kind of Christopher's row here, let's call it. It's got like crackers, granolas, his whoppers, trail mix, chips, all kinds of stuff. And then finally up here, there's a couple boxes of cereal, some protein powder, and I think that's a thing of English muffins. We definitely have our work cut out for us. 
So let me flip you around now and I'll tell you kind of what I envision for this space. Okay, so let's talk about our plan of attack. First off, I have a whole bunch of baskets here that I want to use to really sort everything by kind and just bring some defined spaces into the pantry. Right now it's these massive shelves that really don't have any way of breaking it into specific areas. So I want to use these baskets to create those specific spaces for different kinds of foods. So I'm thinking we'll do one for snack foods, one for those oils and vinegars and kind of cooking ingredients. One maybe that's more baking oriented and put things like baking soda and baking powder in there. And I think that's immediately going to help make this space feel a lot more organized. And then the other big thing I want to do is you just saw that box that I had of herbs and spices and cooking ingredients and the jars in there are every different possible shape and size. Well, I really want to just transform my spice area. So recently I went out and got these really beautiful, they're glass with a bamboo lid spice jars and I got 24 of them I think. And so they're all identical, the same size, so that immediately is a huge improvement and I love that. But what I also did is I printed out these, they're actually like stickers that have all of the different spices that we have. And so what I'm going to do is cut these out, label them, and then fill these jars. And then we're just going to have the most beautiful, practical, functional uh, spice jar area ever. Oh, and that's not all. I'll show you it in a minute, but we also got this really cool, it's kind of like a horizontal organizer, which means that I'm also going to be able to visually see all of my spices at once too. So I really think these two projects of putting everything into baskets and organizing by kinds, and then also putting our spices into a uniform, same size jars that are easy to read is going to make a huge difference in our pantry. So again, let's begin with getting everything out onto the island so we can see what we have and assess everything appropriately and then begin organizing. And after getting everything out, I really just went through a system of trial and error and figuring out exactly how it would work best functionally in our pantry to organize all of these items. I knew generally that I wanted specific categories of items grouped together, but it did require a little bit of playing around with to see what would fit best where and what category each item would best belong in. Okay, so we've made some really good progress here. Everything is in baskets and looking organized. So up here, I've got kind of all of the cereals, crackers, tortilla chips and things like that arranged by height. So it just kind of goes down in a nice little waterfall. And very conveniently, actually, it just has cereals here and crackers here. So it ended up dividing out really well. Over here we have all of Christopher's snacks and I think his bread is in there. So most of his like food area is right here. Then down here I've got all of the cooking oils, baking ingredients, and then dried goods. So I've got rice, oats, barley, things like that in that corner. And then over here, some dried foods. So I normally buy these in bulk. So I've got things like cranberries, uh, raisins, things like that in those little mason jars. And then finally down here I have all of our flour, nothing really changed there, flour, sugar, things like that. Other baking ingredients and then also my snack food. So I've got some little chocolates here, some trail mixes and then some superfood powders. And then we have things like popcorn, almond butter, peanut butter and then again baking things like some yeast for baking bread and things like that. And then on the ground here, I just have one last basket with overstock. So I have things like refills for my flour when that runs out, extra 
salt, pepper, things along those lines. And then my reusable bags for going to the grocery store. So then the last thing here is to sort out all of the herbs and spices in these boxes into these lovely little containers. Oh, and this is the organizer I was talking about earlier. It's got three kind of angled tiers, so it's really easy to see all of the spices at once. So I think what I'm going to do first is to cut out all of these labels that I made and then I'll fill up the jars and then it's going to really easily slot into the pantry just right here. So it's going to go in this spot. I already tested, it fits really well. And then this pantry is going to be done. So I'm going to get started just by cutting up all of these labels. And like I mentioned before, I printed these all onto sticker paper. This is a waterproof matte sticker paper. So they should stay in pretty good condition once they're all cut up. And what I'm going to be using to make sure that I get nice straight lines for these is this paper cutter. It's just like a straight thing that you slide across creates beautiful straight lines. So hopefully these should turn out looking really nice. Let's do this. Okay, so I've got all the labels cut now. We've got 24 of them and this is what they look like. So they each have like a number at the top, the name, and then I say if it's an herb or spice. So I wanted to show you them, that's what they look like. But now I think we're ready to finally start applying them to our jars. Okay, so I have all of these spices labeled now. Love how they turned out. So now what I'm going to do is take all of the spices in these three containers and start filling these guys up. Okay, well we did it. I love how this project turned out. I think that these little spice jars just look so cute. And not only that, they're going to be really practical as well. I am all about some aesthetic and really beautiful way of organizing things, so long as it can be really useful when put into practice. And I really think that's going to be true of these spices. So the last thing that we need to do is put them into the pantry. And then I want to finish this off with a completed pantry tour and we'll wrap this up okay so I am in love with this pantry organization the spices especially I feel like are going to be so convenient to just be able to grab whatever I need and to bring them over for cooking they turned out looking so cool and this is just a really nice visually appealing way of organizing them that's really practical too I already kind of showed you around what we had set up before, but I did want to mention that I uh, switched over some of the jars we had. So all of the pantry goods we could have in one place in the little jars that I've got them in. And then on this side now, I just have all of the baking and cooking supplies. So that's a small change for the pantry. Then again, I have all of like the pantry supplies, snack food, or at least my snack food, lunch stuff and things like that on that side. And then this upper shelf is the exact same, but I really do feel like organizing this section by type and then by size, and then just putting some of the other loose items into baskets, as well as really tackling the spices and turning them from these really kind of gross looking boxes with all kinds of different size spices in them to something that's neat, clean, and organized really has made such a huge difference. And I feel like this pantry honestly just makes me really excited and wanting to cook something and to really take advantage of it. Well, that's it. My pantry and kitchen are feeling so much more organized now. And like I was just sharing, I really do feel this like renewed sense of 
passion and energy and motivation to really want to cook in my kitchen. So really excited about how all of this came out and I really do think that this is just going to make my kitchen a much more practical and functional space to work and to live in too. Now I want to know though, what is one strategy, tip, or tool that you use to organize your kitchen? I'd love to hear about it, so be sure to comment that down below. And if you enjoyed this video and haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. And of course, if you want more daily inspiration and updates, you can always follow me on Instagram. I'm at ashlyn.eaton on there. And again, I'll have that linked below for you. That's everything for today's video though. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.